Hi everyone, Bandana here. Welcome to this week's Warno Dev Blog. So it's our Nemesis Air Assault preview number one for the Warsaw Pact. And there's a smorgasbord of pictures today, so that's always nice. So, Eugen say, we hope you're all well. The upcoming Nemesis Air Assault DLC takes center stage in today's dev blog. We'll be looking at the new mini expansion to Grace Warno, highlighting one of the two new divisions and the new units the Air Mobile Formation brings. So let's put the spotlight on the hardy veterans of the Soviet 56 Separate Guards Air Assault Brigade. So the next subheading is Nemesis Air Assault. This will be the very first of the Nemesis DLCs to make its way to Warno. The Nemesis mini expansions, each with two divisions and bringing new weapons units and models, is a concept we introduced in Steel Division 2, where it has proven to be very popular. The idea is simple. Out of three options, you get to vote on which Nemesis DLC should be developed next. Be prepared for some furious propaganda battles, as we will prepare three separate themed Nemesis options. After showcasing each pair, the ballot opens, and whichever pair of divisions wins will get trucked over to Eugen's workshop for release at a later date. The other divisions will go on the shelf, perhaps even to be dusted off at a future date. Much like Steel Division 2, the debut Nemesis DLC, we have decided on already ahead of time. This is chiefly for ease of development and to allow the divisions to be ready quicker. In Warno's case, this will be the Nemesis Air Assault, focusing on the two Air Mobile divisions, featuring the 56th Separate Guards Air Assault and the US 101st Airborne Division. So what about the Soviet side then? So now it's all about the 56th Separate Guards Air Assault Brigade history. It is closely tied to the Soviet-Afghan War in the 1980s. The particular formation was created from several independent or disbanded Soviet airborne units. Only two months after its creation, the brigade took part in the initial invasion of Afghanistan, securing key mountain passes and allowing the 40th Army to advance through the country quickly. For almost 10 years, the 56th Guard Separate Air Assault Brigade would remain in Afghanistan, producing some of the most hardened Soviet airborne veterans of this conflict. Although the brigade's air assault troops would initially ride their helicopters from peak to pass or strike in the heart of enemy territory, things changed after the introduction of the Stinger manpads into the Mujahideen's hands. From the mid-80s onwards, helicopter and gunship losses mounted, putting prominence on the Stinger scare and forcing the reorganization of the Soviet brigade. This meant that the 56 separate guards air assault became closer to a mechanized infantry formation transported to battle in a much safer BMP-2 and getting some additional organic firepower in the form of a T-62 main battle tank. In real life, the brigade returned to the USSR in June 1989 as part of the overall Soviet withdrawal from Afghanistan. However, in Warnow's timeline, the Afghan-Soviet war is still ongoing, as the Soviet Union never retreated from the country. The 56th Separate Guards Air Assault Brigade is transferred just in time for the Warsaw Pact's invasion of West Germany in the summer of 1989. Soviet High Command envisaged a much better use for the brigade's hardy air assault forces fighting Americans and West Germans instead of getting bogged down in hunting hard-to-defeat guerrillas. So the next subheading is the 56th Separate Guards Air Assault Brigade detailed. How will the 56th Separate Guards Air Assault look in the Nemesis Air Assault, note that most of the following is very much still work in progress. Units bolded and italic are new. They have this collage up of all the different units that they've added. Uh, some of them will look familiar and some of them will look like alterations on other units. So let's have a fun game, dear viewers. Can you tell me what they all are? Let's assume that the top left, the aircraft, is number one along the top following towards the right so it's one two three four five and then the next row obviously is six seven eight nine ten etc etc so let me know in the comments give us a list of what each of them are and what each of the variants are with with whatever weapons or additions you notice some of them will obviously be mentioned in the rest of the dev blog so that'll probably help out Okay, back to the dev block. So most of the brigade's infantry units will be roughly similar to the current 35th Guards Air Assault Brigade. Although there are some historical and gameplay differences, we also found a way to introduce a host of new units. We have duplicated all the descent units and created a DSH variant. While using the same model and sharing the veterancy and shock trait, the main difference is that the DSH versions lack the forward deployment trait. 
Furthermore, some specific infantry units will now use different weapons, mostly older, smaller arms and armaments, including new RPO Rise, shorter range but bigger caliber than the existing RPO A, and the RPG 16, more range but less AP compared to the RPG 7. Lastly, there is no UAZ Jeep, but instead the new LUAZ Amphibious Jeep used in a corresponding role. Although nominally an air assault unit, the 56 Separate Guards Air Assault has been reorganized with heavier mechanized equipment. This means that only part of its infantry can use helicopter transport. For the same reason, the battle group will have fewer helo slots open compared to the American Nemesis Air Assault counterpart. But, and there is a but, it will have a bigger tank category. So, the 56 Separate Guards Air Assault Brigade detailed. What can you expect? Well, in logistics, you will get a more generous array than existing Warno Airborne Divisions. Like other Airborne Division battle groups, the Brigade will not be able to deploy any forward operating base, though. New units include the MI6 Heavy, though not as much as the MI26 Supply Helicopter, and the Chakia, a dedicated but unarmed combat variant of the BTR-60. The infantry tab is the battle group's main strength, thanks to the new DSH infantry coming in a variety of shapes and sizes, including one with the RPG-7VL, another with the RPG-16, a Pulmachiki flavor? I'm always pronouncing that wrong, but I don't understand why they put flavor there. Anyhow, there's Metis and a unit with an RPG-22. The latter supersized unit, I assume they mean the RPG-22, is particularly special, representing half of a platoon, so a 1.5 squad with 50% more men, machine guns and AT ammo, but only deployable in an MI-8. With the large capacity of the MI-8, it felt more than fitting to cramp some extra troops into the hold. Note that the US 101st Airborne Division will have a similar counterpart infantry unit, I assume for a Chinook. There will be a few elite units, the DHS Afghansky squads with an RPOA. There will be the Flame DSH Saprai using the older RPO Rise, but it's a new weapon to the game, but it is an older model of the RPO. That's going to get confusing that they keep calling something new and then saying it's old at the same time. <laughs> Anyhow, they will have the lightly armed Okrani units used for securing and demining roads, an endless chore in Afghanistan, and they will have the usual array of PG-9s, ATGMs, NSVs, AGS, models being redone for that, and the Commandatura. Transport for the infantry is one area where the 56 separate guards air assault shows its variety in unit diversity. The infantry's main transport is the BMP-2D, which is an up-armoured and non-amphibious BMP-2. It's already featured in the game. The main wheeled APC will be the new BTR-70D, also up-armoured and non-amphibious. This vehicle proved to be the favoured platform of the Soviet battlefield modifications by bolting extra weapons on top of the turret. These include the new BTR-70 AGS with an additional grenade launcher. One of the most unusual and most famous Afghan Frankenstein APCs without a doubt is the BTR-70 S5 and the BTR-70 S8 respectively featuring a 16x57mm and a 20x80mm rocket pod sourced from a helicopter for extra ground based fire support. Added to that the BTR-70 Rise with 4 RPO Rise packed together aka in a flash-like fashion, just bolted on, and used as assault engineer vehicles. The BMD and BTRD proved unsuitable for the harsh environments of Afghanistan. Too light to withstand the often encountered mines, these vehicles were quickly discarded for the more unusual GMTU, basically an MTLB cut in half. These come in several variants, the unarmed GTMU-1D and the battlefield modified weapon carrying GTMU-1D AGS, the GTMU-1D SPG-9 and the GTMU-1D ZU-23-2. For the same reason, the Gaz 66B trucks weren't liked due to their cabin being unprotected from mines. This is why the brigade favours the heavier URAL 4320. 
Of course, for an air, Mobile Brigade armed variants of the MI-8 will be available for some infantry squads, as well as the MI-24 Descent for the veteran DSH Afghanski. The new Okarana security squads will have their own transport, the Ural 4320 Melter. Hang on a minute, isn't the Melter a weapon from Warhammer 40k? I don't think they'll be getting one of those strapped to it. An A-team like up armoured truck with a BRDM-2 turret and an S-5 rocket pod stuck on top. This truck will be a troop transport for security troops and will likewise come with a security tray. I mean, it's not a multi-melter, but, you know, it does have some weird weapons strapped to the top of it. Look at the picture. Look at that picture. Okay, over to artillery. An average category number of slots with light options. These include an 82mm and 120mm mortar, as well as the few MTLB Vaslik and a Nona S self-propelled unit. Further backed by a D30 towed and 2S1 self-propelled 120mm howitzer, plus a BM21 and BM21V MLRS. The heaviest artillery unit on hand isn't a howitzer, but a mortar, the relatively rare and new unit to the game, the M240 240mm, coming in separate HE and cluster variants. So basically, it's a bloody big mortar. I wonder if this is anything like... So the Americans and the British had some of the Americans, I believe, but we, we developed our own but never put it into practice, I think. There was like a mortar that was huge like this, but it could carry a tactical nuclear weapon. So I like had mortar shells that were tactical nukes. I don't know if the Russians had the same. Very likely they did. Obviously, we won't be getting that weapon in game. Anyhow, over in the tank tab, it is a stronger category compared to other airborne divisions. A new unit includes the LUAZ 967M ATGM Amphibious Jeep. Furthermore, one card each of the T-62 MDK Command, T-62 MD-1 without ATGM, and the T-62 MD with ATGM main battle tanks. The MD variant features extra side and rear cope cage armor compared to the M version. Just to clarify on Eugen's behalf, the official name for this armor is Slat Armor. Okay, over to Recon, another strong category featuring units such as the DSH Razvedka, a four-man team deployable in either the LUAZ Jeeps, MI-8 or MI-24D Descent, as well as the heavier eight-man DSH Mod Razvedka with Raz BTR 60PD or the Raz BMP2D, the venerable BRDM2 armored car, the MI-8 PPA Recon Jammer Helicopter, this variant is older than the MI-8 MTPI, which is already in the game, and features less ECM. The only member of the BMD family kept in service in the Air Assault Brigade is the Rheostat Radar Recon Unit. A more unusual radar recon unit is the ZSU-23 4M2PSNR, which is a Shilka SPAG with a PSNR ground radar bolted on the turret. Very useful for spotting Mujahideens on the move, even at night. This vehicle has turned into a pure fire support recon vehicle, unable to engage planes anymore. Doesn't say it can't engage helicopters, though. And then finally, there are the Spetsnaz Gru Stinger. These are a Wiley Special Forces recon team operating deep behind enemy lines. This particular squad has pilfered the enemy weapons cache and are using captured early Stinger basic man pads against their previous owners. Okay, over in the anti-air tab, a mere brigade, the 56 separate air assault, doesn't have access to any heavy or long-range anti-air systems. On the other hand, what it does do well is protection at close range. The main man pad available, aside from the Spetsnaz carrying looted stingers, will be carried by the DSH Igla teams. SPAG units include the ZSU-23 4M2 Afghanski 2, which we first introduced in reference to the Real Life Brigade, and the Battlefield modified Ural 4320 ZPU-4 and the Ural 
4320ZU23-2 used in equal measure as ground fire support vehicles and for short-range anti-air warfare. The only SAM system available is the MTLB Strela 10M. Over in the helicopter tab, helicopters are well represented with far-ranging access to armed MI8 and MI24V and the MI24P, but not the VP variant. A new helicopter available only to this battle group is the MI-24P anti-air with two R-60M missiles. And then over in the air tab, a rather average category, you can count on a mix of the MiG-23 MLD for air cover, the MiG-27 and the SU-25 close support aircraft, and two new MiG-27 variants are featured, and they are the MiG-27K AT-1 and the MiG-27K AT-2, respectively with two new KH-29L AGM plus 80mm rockets and two KH-29T AGM with R-60M A-2A missiles. I think they could have just written out air to air there. The 56 Separate Guards Air Assault will prove to be a versatile division, being half air mobile, half mechanized with plenty of veteran soldiers. A host of jury rigged and battlefield modified vehicles will give the battle group's arsenal a colorful twist. And that's everything for this week. Next week, they will be detailing the NATO counterpart, the US 101st Airborne Division. Thanks for joining me, everyone. I'll see you all soon.